Manchester United later insisted that Shaw misheard what was being said between Atmel and Maguire um, because basically he's saying that Stuart Atwell said, look, I can't, I can't award this penalty because there'll be too much controversy after the game. Um, Manchester United is saying Luke, Luke must have misheard that conversation. Joining us now for more on the drama at Stamford Bridge yesterday, Chief Sports Writer for The Times, Henry Winter. Good morning, Henry. Very good morning, Henry. Morning, Laura. Morning, Ellie. How are we? We're well. excellent, thanks. It wouldn't be a weekend, it wouldn't be a Monday morning, Henry, if we the place, the whole sporting world wasn't <laughs> riddled with controversy. I'm not even going to go near the Wales-England rugby game, Henry. I'm going to leave that for the moment, but I'm going to ask you about the incident clearly at the bridge yesterday. What was your take on it? Well, my immediate take was to go on to the Chelsea website, which is a, a very good website. And uh, Solskjaer was talking afterwards, I think with Jeff Shreves on Sky, about how they'd highlighted Harry Maguire and certain penalty incidents. And th there seems to be this whole sort of conspiracy theory has grown up over actually what is essentially an individual refereeing mistake. Yep. I don't think that the referees are necessarily biased against any particular club. I know all supporters do. I just think that Stuart Atwell, who's, who's a decent but not great referee just made a simple mistake but i think what this has brought out and i think something that lewis dunk was talking about uh, after the brighton after his free kick was ruled out by lee mason is that referees need to come out and talk afterwards not necessarily to sort of the hound dogs of of like people like me in the, in the press but just actually explain to so if it's a sky game just explain to sort of jeff shreves exactly the thought process behind that decision or, I mean, you mentioned rugby earlier and, and cricket too. You, you, the referees, the, the umpires, whoever, uh, mic'd up and you can actually hear their thought process. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, VAR is a pretty poor experience if you're in the ground for, for, for players, for supporters, probably for viewers as well. And if actually that thought process was explained, the law to the games was explained, actually it might sort of enhance the experience rather than leaving the people who matter most, the players and the supporters, in the dark. At the moment, Henry, Mike Riley's saying that he wants to protect the intimacy and the privacy of the referee by not micing him up and saying that protocol doesn't allow it at the moment. Um, I've literally just seen it come through on Sky Sports, actually, on Sky Sports News about his comments and what he's saying. Um, we want to maintain privacy, intimacy of conversations between players and referees on the field of play. Um, we do kind of, we are privy to a bit more than we used to be without fans in stadiums anyway. Um, so I'm not sure what will happen with that. It looks like they won't be doing that for now. Um, what I found quite interesting actually is your point on post-match interviews with, with, with referees. What concerns me a little bit about that is I'm one of those pe people as well that gets to do the post-match interviews and usually more often than not you don't get the person that you want to speak to in terms of players because I know Lewis don't came out and said look I've got to front it up I've got to have this conversation but a lot of the time if they want protection from the clubs the clubs actually won't put them up and you'll have to have a second choice up your sleeve so you won't get the person you necessarily want to talk to if it's somebody that's involved in a controversial moment so my concern is if if do you think Henry if we start offering up referees for interviews as well does it add even more pressure to to what they're doing at the moment because i feel like i don't know how you feel but i feel like we're seeing more referee mistakes because there is so much more pressure with var and it just feels like it's getting a little bit out of hand laura i think everyone's got a, a public opinion on a referee's decision apart from the referee himself or herself i mean they have to come out and actually sort of explain it's not i mean everyone's talking about accountability i think it's more it's about transparency at the moment you're getting referees getting death threats their families are being hounded on social media over something they might actually be able to explain they might actually simply come out and talk to you laura or talk to jeff shreves and actually say listen i made a mistake there. I'm, I'm, I'm human. I think there will be more sympathy for, for an official. I think Mike Riley at PGMO is actually part of the problem. I think this is maybe partly his characteristic that he necessarily wouldn't want to talk, whereas actually some of the referees I know are actually pretty engaging characters, can come out. You know, they go through a lot of flack. I think they'll be able to sort of talk to, uh, to, to you and Jeff after a game in a controlled way and actually be able to get their points over there. Because at the moment, I mean, take a referee like Stuart Apple. As I say, he's not one of our greatest referees. I don't think this is a particularly good generation, but this is an individual who's worked his way up through local leagues, non-league, West Midlands, EFL, Premier League. He made a few mistakes, went back down into the EFL. But, you know, he was good enough at 25 to be the youngest ever Premier League referee. And now he is being accused of certain things. OK, I know Manchester United backtracked on Luke Shaw's comments, but he is being accused of certain things without having a right to reply in a controlled, measured environment to you, Laura, or to Jeff, or whoever.
Do you know? Do you know what I, I, I think a little bit, Henry? I think VAR is taking away um, the referee's right, strangely enough, to make an honest mistake. And I'll tell you why. I watched that incident yesterday, right? And I thought, no way is it a penalty, right? And we talk about referees. Of course, they'll make mistakes. They're human. But because they're getting an opportunity now to go and remedy, in a lot of people's eyes, mistake, if they don't change it, They've got nowhere to go. In fact, that's what I said this morning, Henry. In many ways, the instrument that's there to help them is hindering them. But that's what it well, should I be agree. there for, though, isn't it? The, the, like, isn't isn't that the point of VAR to correct mistakes, though, Henry? Like, isn't that shouldn't that be happening? Absolutely. I th- it, what's been interesting is now with the return of particularly the Champions League, we're seeing how the, the elite referees of Europe are using VAR and working with their team at UEFA's HQ on VAR in a more judicious way. So it's not being used as a safety net. They do have their confidence in the uh, in their abilities. And yeah. what you've got at the moment is you've got players questioning every decision because they're not completely convinced about this collection of referees. And I actually felt a little bit sorry for Apple going over to the monitor and almost being man-marked by Cesar Azpilicueta and Hudson Adoy as he went there, and Harry Maguire, whose voice could probably have been heard back in uh, back at Old Trafford, was sort of barking out instructions as well. So, look, also, maybe part of this is social, maybe one or two elements at Manchester United actually highlighting this because actually it slightly masks their lack of ambition. I mean, we're talking about VAR and Stuart Atwell, but actually if that had been a Ferguson team or if Manchester United fans had been in that corner of the shed end, they would have been demanding more application, more attacking, more adrenaline from Manchester United late on. So absolutely, let's let's analyse VAR, let's analyse the referees, but let's not also escape from uh, one or two of Manchester United's failings on the pitch. Mm. What about Chelsea? Can I ask you how you think they're doing under Tuchel? Tuchel was really adamant in his post-match interview as well, wasn't a penalty. Um, quite clearly on the Chelsea side of things, he'd probably say that anyway. But what do you think about the way that he is handling this squad of players? Do you know, Law, you know where the press box is at um, at Stamford Bridge? And we're slightly at the moment because it's all socially distanced and we're slightly to one side of that. But I was seeing fairly close to Tuchel. He's absolutely brilliant in the uh, in the technical area, mm. getting his... Um, getting his instructions over, making his decisions. I speak a little bit of German and certainly enough basic German to pick up some of the uh, the lively language that he was using at certain players. He's a very animated character. I quite like him. I think he's handled it pretty well so far. He's, he's unbeaten. I, I thought he maybe could have bought Timo Werner on slightly earlier, but there's a sort of belief in there. I think he's handling of certain players. I didn't like seeing Hudson Adoy being subbed. I didn't think he was... Uh, necessarily quick enough to appreciate the quality of Mason Mount, but he has done that. And Mount, I thought, was terrific again yesterday and has been has been under um, uh, Tuchel just as he was under Lampard. So, look, I think it's encouraging times. But the problem is, is that he has to finish in the Champions League positions. Mm. So, in a way, that was a better point for Manchester United yesterday than it was for Chelsea. 